So Kirby, with you in being involved in real estate, real estate investing, rental properties, that sort, um, what are you seeing so far with the housing market? Well, housing market got two segments, the owner occupier and then the real estate investment. What side are you talking about first? Your side. Well, <laughs> whatever you do. No, that's the only side, huh? <laughs> all right. So so all right, first, first quickly. All right, I got you. All right. So the I'm just gonna touch on owner I we could uh, side we, we can first. talk on both. All right, both. the owner I, excuse me. I said we could talk on both just so everyone can see. Right. Yeah. So the owner I Occupy side or owner op, that's what it's called. Um, that market is slowing down drastically. And the reason why it's slowing down drastically is it used to be 2020, 2020, 2021, you know, those bidding wars that were sending the prices up super high. Uh, it is still houses that's priced above the level that they should be, way overvalued. But now the price that's slowing down the demand is the interest rates has driven high also. So if somebody could afford, let's say, a $300,000 house where interest rates was at 3% and they was paying like $1,200, $1,300 a month. And then now interest rates is at 6.5% and they're paying almost eighteen dollars to $2,000 a month. Those people can't afford the same price house because the monthly payments are way higher. The value of the house could still be the same, but the monthly payments are too high and price them out of the market. So you don't see the extreme bidding wars that you saw back in 2020 and 2021. Uh, as far as on the investment side, it's still still got some competition out there, but um, I see a lot of new investors, even though interest rates are high, they still go in there paying asking price. Um, houses are sitting on the market longer for investment properties. Before, I would search the MLSs, I would search every avenue that I could, and a house would sit on the market for a day, maybe three days max. And I'm looking in different areas. I mean, I'm looking at different states, different areas, and I'm here in Florida, but I'm looking in Georgia. I'm looking in Texas, Oklahoma. I'm everywhere looking, but the rental properties was, wasn't staying on the market for longer than longer than a week. That was that was like five years back, back in 2020, 20, 20, right. 2021. If something was on the market for a week, it was like five years in a regular market, comparable. Uh, but now you start to see how to stay on the market longer. Uh, you still see some bidding wars some places, but it's more, it's more subdued. You don't see the extreme bidding wars. You don't see 50, 60 offers on one property no more. Because again, the property's prices are already elevated. The seller still hasn't came to the realization that interest rates has risen higher. So the number of people that can buy that property when the interest rates was lower has waned drastically. Of course, they only need one buyer. But the number of buyers that they got to choose from is very little. So right now is a perfect time for people who have capital to put in great offers. And what I mean by great offers, if somebody's, let's say they got a, a property still up there for 400000 and you do your numbers and you see the, the numbers make sense at 350, 325, 335, something like that. This is a good time to start putting in those lower bid offers. Uh, before, if you put in a lower bid offer, they just laugh at you. And of course, everything was going for ask price. But now things are not moving as fast. Uh, the real estate agents and things like that are starting to come to the realization that we're not in that uh, hyper bubble of 2020, 2021, where the prices is just going to keep getting bid over and over as. So some some uh, sellers, they're starting to come down on the price. If you look at the MLS now, you start to see about 10, 15 percent of the houses already started cutting prices. So that's a good sign for the buyer in this market. But again, the inverse side to that is interest rates are higher. So if you look into the investment world and you're trying to invest in properties, you got to make sure you're doing a great deal based on the metrics and the numbers and the revenue that the property is generating, not off some pie in the sky number that you just think, oh, it sold for $400,000 last year. This another property you can sell for $400,000 also your numbers are you're going to be cash flow negative if you do that. Now, if you get the if the rent has been risen since last year than it is now, then you might have a better chance the numbers might work. But you cannot be buying bad deals and think you're going to escape out of, it, especially at these interest rates. Especially if you have more than one property, you could be paying interest rates up there to the six, seven, eight percent, depending on if you're doing uh, QM or non QM mortgages. Do you think that? Uh the rising interest rates is affecting 
some of the big corporations that we saw during 2020 and 2021, such as like uh, Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan and Chase buying up all these houses. Do you think they care about these 8%, 6% interest rates? Or are they buying? When the they buy the houses, no, they don't care about the interest rate. Because if they pay in cash, they don't care about the interest rates because. Right, right, right. Because they're paying, they're paying cash, you know, and then they, they, they have a model, especially when you're being like a Blackstone or something like that, and you're buying hundreds and hundreds of thousands of single family homes. You know, only thing you need is a 4% 4, 4 return. You don't need the 12, 15% return like the normal mom and pop investor or somebody that has a small portfolio trying to get that cash flow to live their life. They, they go with a 4% return. So they can still go out there and buy homes and then put tenants in there. The problem that they're going to have, especially with the inflation, gas prices, food prices, everything going up, and then they, every property that they buy, they have at, at super high rents at, they're pushing the market or they're at the top of the market on every property that, that they do. I can see the demand, well, not the demand, the demand will still be there because people will need a place to stay, but people's ability to pay those rents I think that will slow down some. They will start getting delinquencies and things like that. And that will probably hurt their financial model. I don't know if it'll take six months, two years from now, but you'll start seeing that because I'm seeing properties that was written in 2020, 2021, let's say for $1,200. $1, One of those big firms, you know, equity firms buy the property and then they're, they're, putting the, they're doubling the rent with minimal uh, upgrades or whatever but they're doubling the rent still in the same neighborhood and it's coming harder and harder for them to find tenants that can afford those properties. And right. I think that that's the only flaw there. That's, that's going to be the only flaw in their business model, but because they pay cash, maybe they can, you know, bring down their numbers, but I don't, I, of course, I don't know the numbers to their matrix of what they need to do as a return, but that rental level, I believe will drop a little bit if the demand, if, the demand wanes and people can't afford to pay those rent. No, I mean, do you see those companies pulling down the rents? I know we've talked about like in, in the Florida rental market, you know, rents have stayed the same or gone up, but never gone down. Do you see that happening or is it just going to, you know, or do you expect to see delinquent uh, tenants, but you know, they're not going to budge on the rental price. I believe we will see delinquent tenants. Uh, the reason why, remember, before now, most of the properties that was owned in Florida or around was owned by small companies or mom and pop investors. So they wasn't stretching the market on the rents. Right. So all of the rents that equity firms buy, all those houses that they buy, their rents are at or above what the market rate is. So they're creating the new market for what mm. rent is. So the demand, the demand will, if the delinquencies pick up, they can keep the rent rates at, at where it's at. They either gonna have one or two things. They'll have a lot of delinquent tenants or they're gonna have people that's not gonna rent in their places because the rent's too high. Because again, like I said, they are like, they're extending the market higher than it right. ever was. I have properties here in the Tampa area. The rents that they're paying now in that area because equity firms came in there and drove up the rent, it's bigger than my projections what the rent would be in the next five or 10 years. We're already there today. Wow. So I don't know how many people are going to keep affording it because the job market in the Tampa area is good as far as pay, but it's not great as far as we in Beverly Hills or San Francisco or something right. like that, where they're bringing in six figures and can pay, you know, $2,500, uh, $3,000, $3,500 a month for rent. So right. we're not in that job market. So, I mean, we don't have a, a lot of tech heavy companies here in the Tampa area or nothing like that. So something has to give, something has to give. So if the, if the companies don't come down on the rents, what will they do? I don't know. Maybe sell. Maybe, but I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, that's and that's a good point because, I mean, that's one thing I've noticed is, you know, all these uh, rental prices are going up, mortgages are more expensive, and it's blowing up in the, you know, the Florida market from 
you know, Central Florida down to South Florida, I mean, huge, like as if it's nearing California prices, but we don't have California jobs over here. Um, no. <laughs> and so, I mean, but like you said, you brought up a point where, I mean, if these big firms are paying cash, uh, like the Black Rocks and uh, JP Morgan, if they're paying cash for properties, they can withstand, you know, having a delinquent tenant could they not in evicting them? I mean, there would be no reason if, if they've paid a property off in cash, they wouldn't have to come down on the rental prices to adjust to people that can afford it. Right. They can just hold their prices as it is and create this new market. Like you were talking about. Um, well, there's one caveat you're missing there. They are publicly traded companies and what that business sector do is reported to the shareholders. So them having right. a crap ton of delinquent uh, rent and they're not receiving much revenue or they're having, because remember, they still got to pay upkeep. I mean, let's say tenants, let's just say tenants are not paying or they're delinquent or they can't fill the housing. So that still goes to the balance sheet. That still goes to the balance sheet of quarter over quarter, year over year revenue from that segment of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, they have other people to answer to. So they have to find a way to capitulate or do something to make it happen. If it was just a private company, like a, I'm not going to say their name because I don't want them to try to sue us, but we got a private big firm out here. It starts with a P. We have a private big firm out here that buys a lot of rental properties. It's a private firm. So what they answer to their board is different from, you know, like the Blackstones and things like that is buying up single family properties. If it's a publicly traded company, it's a lot harder for them to sit there and deal with the delinquencies and not do nothing about it. So right. that is, that's the difference between a private company and a public company, but both companies, they're answering the shareholders somewhere, but it's amplified when it's a public company that has a lot of delinquent tenants and it's a segment. I mean, we saw how Zillow, they was in the fix or flip business and that wasn't going well for them. And they and they showed that segment of the business of Zillow how much money it was losing. And then Zillow just crushed the whole project, just squashed the whole project altogether. Right. That's what happens. That's what happens when you're a public traded company. You have to answer. And so the private, it just depends on where they're at and what their numbers are. And if, if the investors or the shareholders of that company is really paying attention to those numbers in that segment to see if it's dragging it down. Because if you get... Uh, a 30, 40% delinquency rate, that number is going to stick out like a red thumb on the balance sheet or an income statement. So it's just how they plan to massage that or use that. But the reason why they have the rent so high for their properties is because they would come in bidding more style and outbid everybody with the higher cash price than what the house was worth. So the only way they can get their money back is by charging higher rents. Right. So that's how they did that so it's just a matter of you know if i mean i hope it it don't come to that where a lot of people are sitting on the streets but something's going to have to give especially with gas prices food prices educational costs everything else rising and people's income is not rising as fast as all this other stuff is rising something's going to have to give and if the companies fail they fail i mean i don't care about the companies i care more about the people itself and them having an affordable place to live